This is Patrick Dolans with the second of three presentations on national income accounting. In this presentation, we'll be working with real, nominal, and GDP deflator data. In order to do that, you want to familiarize yourself with what I'm referring to here as the relationship. The relationship connects the three different kinds of variables to one another. It's an equation, really, or a formula, and it's one that you want to master. The relationship says that the ratio of nominal GDP to real GDP, when multiplied by 100, provides the GDP deflator for that particular year. Write this down and we'll use it as we work with the following table of data. The table that you see containing a number of incomplete entries is the sort of table that gets replicated on out-of-class assignments and exams. We'll start by solving for the missing blue cell. Here we're looking for nominal GDP. So, returning to the relationship, nominal GDP divided by real GDP times 100 equals GDP deflator. We'll substitute 1000 in for the real GDP value and 120 in for the GDP deflator value and then solve for nominal GDP. Initially, we can simplify the division by 1,000 and the multiplication by 100 as actually the division by 10. Verify this for yourself if you need to by adding an extra step. The next task is to isolate nominal GDP by itself. We can accomplish this by multiplying both sides of the equal sign by 10. This gives us nominal GDP isolated on the left and 120 times 10 on the right. 120 by 10 multiplied by 10 is math you can do in your head and that gives us a nominal GDP figure for 1200. Placing 1200 in that initial cell allows us to move into year 3. Year 3 we're trying to find the GDP deflator. This time we have the nominal value and the real value but we need to find the price index. Once again returning to the relationship nominal divided by real times 100 gives us the deflator. This one's relatively straightforward. We plug in 1500 for nominal GDP, 1200 for real GDP. We're going to take that ratio, multiply it by 100, and that will give us the deflator. With a calculator, or maybe perhaps in your head, you can determine that 1500 divided by 1200 is 1 1.25, 1 and 1 quarter. We're going to multiply 1 1.25 by 100 and that will give us the deflator. Obviously multiplying by 100 is the same thing as moving the decimal two places and that's why the GDP deflator for year 3 turns out to be 125. Returning to the table we plug in the 125 value that we just calculated and now we're going to solve for that year 4 real GDP cell that's been highlighted. Once again using the relationship nominal GDP divided by real GDP times 100 equals a deflator. This time we have a nominal GDP value of 1800 and we know the deflator value is 150 so we're just going to solve for real GDP. This one takes a little bit more work because GDP excuse me because real GDP is in the denominator we're going to multiply both sides of the equal sign both sides of the equation by real GDP to get it out of that denominator. That moves it over from the left hand side to the right hand side. Next we're going to isolate real GDP and that requires dividing by 150. We could do the multiplication on the left first and then divide by 150. It would give us the same result. You can verify that with a calculator by the way. Or you could do what I've done which is rearrange the terms slightly so that I have 100 divided by 150 and that will make it a little easier to divide or to um, multiply by 1800 but however you do this eventually you'll end up with the answer of 1200 1200 then becomes real GDP for year 4 and you can see that that's now in the table for the last part of completing this table we need a process for determining the rate of inflation the rate of inflation is nothing more than the percentage change in a price index 
in this case, a percentage change in the GDP deflator. To find a percentage change, we'll take the new value of the deflator, we'll subtract the old value of the deflator, take that difference, and divide it by the old value of the deflator. Be careful. When you're calculating inflation rates, you always want to look at two consecutive years. As you work your way through the table, you will need to keep updating the denominator as you change the two consecutive years that are being examined. You'll see what I mean in a moment. Let's figure out the inflation rate for year two. Notice, by the way, that year one did not have an inflation calculation possible. That's because you need two years to make a comparison. And nowhere do we have any information that tells us what the GDP deflator value was in year zero. Therefore, it would be a mistake to assume there was no inflation in year one. And in fact, the only thing we can say is that we don't know. To find the inflation rate for year two, we'll take the year two deflator value, which is 120, We'll subtract the year one deflator value, which is 100. We have those in parens because we need that subtraction to happen first. Then we'll divide by the year one deflator, which is 100. 20 divided by 100 is once again math that you can do in your head. But whether you do it in your head or do it with a calculator, you'll get the same result, 0 0.2. You could also express this as 20% if you're more comfortable with that notation but you definitely should not combine the percent sign with the decimals if you don't know what you're doing. Anyone who records the final answer as 0.20% has in fact gotten all the way to the end of this problem and then stumbled at the finish line and ended up with an inaccurate result. In any case, with year two inflation recorded, we can now move to year three. This is an example of where I suggested you need to pay attention to the denominator. Notice we had 100 in the denominator a moment ago. Now we'll have to update it. Because for year 3, we're comparing year 2 to year 3. Here are the numbers. The year 3 deflator is 125. The year 2 deflator is 120. We take the difference between those, do that calculation first, hence the parens, and put it in the numerator. We need the year 2, not year 1 anymore, but the year two deflator in the denominator, that's the 120. When we do the calculation in the numerator, we get five. Five divided by 120, not as easy to do in your head, but a calculator will assist you. And you get 0 0.04166666, as many sixes as you'd like until you're ready to round one up to seven. We're gonna simplify that to 4.2%. You could, of course, note it as 0 0.042 and the rounding would be acceptable in that form as well. Only one cell remaining and we already know the process. It's simply a matter of updating the numbers. The deflator for year 4 is 150. The deflator for year 3 was 125. The difference between those will go in the numerator. In the denominator, we're going to update our reference to year 3 because we're looking at the percentage change from year three to year four. So again, the 125 is not the denominator we're using a moment ago, and it's not the denominator we used in the first calculation. I keep emphasizing the importance of this because in my experience, this is the most common mistake students are likely to make with these sorts of problems. In any case, the numerator gives us a value of 25. The denominator is a value of 125. And once again, we have a calculation you may be able to do without a calculator. But whether you rely on a calculator or not, you should end up with a result of 0.2 or 20%. We fill that into the final cell, and we've completed the table. And if you understand what we've just done, you should be in really good shape for working with macroeconomic data on either an out-of-class assignment or on an exam.